Hello everyone. Um, today we will be um, running a basic simulation of a cantilever beam um, loaded at the edge and uh, yeah, fixed from the root um, by using the student version of Abacus that we installed earlier. So here I will try to explain the problem to you. Um, what we will be doing is we will be using uh, uh, cross section of the beam that is that will be somehow equal to 10 millimeters by let's say 15 millimeters right and then the length of the beam will be 50 millimeters um, in 3D, it should look something like this. So this schematic is easier to understand. And what we will try is we will try to fix it from this end. And we will try to load it on this edge. Okay. So we want to make this beam using steel, properties of steel, which will be, um, so I will call Young's modulus, which will be equal to 210 gigapascal and Poisson's ratio that will be 0 0.3. So these are only elastic properties. Right, and later we will uh, see. We will also try to apply um, plastic properties, and then we will uh, compare the difference in the results. Um, just to give you an overview, in the end, what we want is we want to see um, uh, three things: total deformation, total, total deformation number one number two is uh, stress distribution and then strain distribution um, because we will do, do it like this you would also have studied um, about uh, cantilever beams um, loaded at the edge or maybe simply supported cantilever beams and you can also run simulations um, with the, using those geometries that you can easily solve analytically and you can compare your results with the numerical simulations okay so this is something that we will try to um, simulate today and let's get started so what i have done here is i have already installed the student version with you uh, before and here I will be using this. So once you will open um, this um, abacus and you will use uh, select the first structural simulations and explicit simulations tab, you will come here in a very um, clean window. Um, we will talk about um, these details here on the side and on the top while we will be um, defining these simulation models. Uh, but let, let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is we want to um, set a working directory. So you will click on file and here there is option of the set a working directory. So by default it is set as C temp which we selected while we were installing uh, Abacus that this will be our default working directory. What I will do is I will open up this working directory and I will uh, create a new folder here. And the folder name will be Canty Beam. And this is something that I will use um, throughout. This is the word that I will be using throughout my um, tutorial today or, or, or yeah, the lecture or the visual today. So yeah, th that I want to put everything regarding this in one folder. So I've created this folder 
and then I double click this it opens and I select OK no it doesn't work like that I have to click this and then I press OK and now my working directory has changed okay so this means that all my work my files that I will create my um, outputs that will that will be generated my other extra um, files that that are needed for simulations everything will be put in this folder and nowhere else so this is how and and selecting a working directory is important because it then you remember that path and be in in that path everything is available um this, this will we will come back to that when we will look at the results so once you have done this you have this open clean window here which we will use as a working space and then you have like any other conventional uh, working tool you have a toolbar a toolbars on the top with certain options shortcuts which you can directly use and then we have a special tree here um, um, that is something which is uh, specific to all the you know, finite element numerical simulation softwares um, so that you can use define things step by step through all these cases and in the end you can get results right so yeah you remember this we want to define this beam with this cross section and how we can do that is uh, first I will rename my model I will you don't have to do that but I just want to do it it the I have renamed it so this is my model which is Kenty beam I will rename it again and I want to name it elastic right because here we will be only using the elastic attributes so once once I want to define parts now once you will double click on this a new window will appear which will look like this so I have so the first thing that I have to do is I have to name this part I will name this part as again Canty beam it is it will be 3d it will be deformable <coughs> and um, it will be solid and we then we want to create this part using um, extrusion right so we will create one side of it and then we'll extrude it to um, to make it 3d and this is something that you will uh, you will be familiar with if you are already familiar with the uh, modeling tools this is something that we use here approximate size is the size of the working space that we will get because I will want to make it in millimeters um, then I will just select the size to be I don't know five I don't know so very small because uh, my size is only um, 10 millimeters by, uh, by 15 millimeters right so we come here so once I will click OK um, I will reach on this window and now I have to um, construct a cross section so what I will do is I will construct this cross section here and then I will extrude it into a beam 50 millimeters right so let's do that um, here there are different options to uh, to select from uh, you can create a line a circle a circle a circle an arc but I will just create a rectangle and what I want to do is I want to create a rectangle uh, you have to click and then once I click again I have created a rectangle right and now I want to give it dimensions so the 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 way of doing it is uh, by clicking here add um, uh, dimension and then I select this line to give it dimension as and and then it when I click this it asks for the new dimensions I want to write it uh, 15 e minus 3 so it is 15 millimeters right so it is so small yeah that that's what I was expecting um, and uh, then I click here and then this should be 10 e minus 3 which means in meters it is 10 millimeters okay 
So this is our new cross section with the said dimensions. And now I have, as I have defined the dimensions, I can click the center mouse button or I can just click on this cross to cancel the procedure. Once I've canceled it and I have this closed geometry, I can click done and it will give me this window, right? And it is asking for extrusion. And for extrusion, I want to extrude it to 150 millimeters. And that's what we will do now. So if I click OK, we get this beam exactly something that we intended now i am using my middle mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out in in, in this view what i can also do is um, i can select you you can you can see here if if you do not have any of these um, toolbars you can just go here you can click toolbars and then you can select the settings which I have and then you will have all these tools bars available right view toolbars and uh, yeah there is one toolbar missing I will want to add it here which is views it comes here so I will just add it here yeah so in this views toolbar uh, this is my default um, view. If I want to um, rotate this, I, I, I click on this and then I can uh, click and drag and this is how I will be able to rotate my beam and look at it, right? And if I want to just translate it, move it around on the screen, I click on here and then I can move it like this so this is how I will navigate through um, this window and move my piece around for example like this or like this right okay and below here you can see this um, um, uh, reference or coordinate system the x is in my direction y is on the top z it in z is in, in the direction that, that the beam was extruded in and um, yeah generally that that is all that you need to know about how to move this piece because it will come in handy later mm. okay so we have created a part here and the, in this tree you will see one written in front of part I can open it I can open it and <coughs> if I want to modify the geometry <coughs> I will double click here um, solid extrude and this will give me all the dimensions here so I can change that to modify my geometry or I can um, change my sketch section sketch to modify my section sketch and then I will um, yeah, yeah modify this as well let's not go that deep into it because it will come in later let's move on to defining the material now we want to define a material as we discussed before when I double click here I open up a window which looks like this and it is asking for the name of the material. So my name of the material is steel. And um, what I want to do is I want to um, create a material with only elastic properties. So I am clicking on mechanical, elastic, and elastic. Um, it is isotropic. Um, and um, then it is asking for two things. So remember what we saw here. So we have decided that the Young's modulus will be 210 gigapascals and Poisson's ratio will be 0 0.3 for this material. So that's usually the case with steel and that is what we will be defining here. So it is 210 E9, um, which is gigapascals. 
and then Poisson's ratio is 0 0.3 for now we are not defining anything but if I want to define it as an elastic plastic material later um, then you will see that I can also define it I can also define plasticity I can also define its other attributes and properties using um, other windows so I will just add them here for example I will click plastic it will ask me for the plastic properties I can add them here and then the the material will be more defined for now I am just removing it because we had as we discussed we are only defining it as elastic material in the beginning okay so once I have defined my material we do not need to use these calibrations tab um, and uh, we want to define sections so this is important because sometimes when you're when we are using a, a, a line or a hollow um, section then this comes in handy but for now our section is just a solid homogeneous section and it is not that complicated um, so abacus requires us to define a section we will name this section again as steel section it is solid it is homogeneous and we will just continue once we click continue we get this window where we select a certain material steel um, we do not require for now because we have already defined it 3d so we do not need to define plane stress strain thickness and we will just click ok right and now one thing that I want to do is I want to assign this section to um, our um, our beam because I want to tell the simulation model that steel um, that this beam uh, has these properties and sections that I have defined earlier so one way of doing it is by uh, clicking here assign section and uh, it will ask me to um, select regions to be assigned to the sections I will uncheck this I will select this and press done it will open up a window like this where it will say the, for the picked region the section is steel and I click OK and the color changes right a section is assigned the other way of doing it is I will delete it so now it is white again the other way of doing it is I go in my so one way of doing it is as I told you before click here and then you can assign a section the other way of doing it is cl you click on part and then on the candy beam and then section assignment and again it will ask this question so it is important for you to um, uh, to, to read the instructions that are below so Abacus guides you about what it is asking for select the regions to be assigned to be assigned a section I select this I press done and then again the same window will appear I will click OK and its color will change right so this is how a section is assigned now once a section is assigned in Abacus usually because uh, people are running complicated simulations and therefore what they have done is they have created this um, requirement to define an assembly um, if we have only one part we do not need to assemble it with more parts but still we need to import it into an assembly just to have um, our uh, part assembled so then later we can use other attributes on that um, so what I will do is then I have to double click on assembly and now you will see that these um, the module the, uh, these points will change and these are the shortcuts really associated with the assembly and you can also go in different modules from this button here so if you will click here initially we were in the part module where we modeled then we were in the property module where we defined our material then we created a section then we assigned the section um, now we are in the assembly module where we uh, will just import our part here so when I click this uh, create instance it will just open up this window I only have one part so I will import this part I will select dependent mesh uh, which uh, which means the mesh will be on the part and, the in, and for the independent mesh the mesh is on the instance so do I want to mesh in the assembly region or do I want to mesh in the part region 
as we only have one part so it doesn't matter I will just select this as a default setting and I will click OK and now we have two things we have this assembly reference coordinate system and we have our beam because we will not be using too much of this so I will just open this in features I will delete this coordinate system because I don't need that and then what I will do is I will just want my to I want the simulation want the model Abacus to show me the beam in its full um, magnification <coughs> right so far so good so what we have done until now is we have created a part we have uh, defined a material which was only elastic with Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio then using section we assigned that material to our part and now in the assembly module we have imported our part so it seems blue and now we will go further a very important thing in um, in uh, finite element numerical simulations is selecting a solver in abacus we have several solvers that can be selected using this um, steps function so once i will double click here i will see this new window that will appear and it will ask for the name of the step so i will um, name it load what it does is uh, here we are defining that what kind of solver do we want to use so here there you will see there are different types of solvers all of them have different set of equations different requirements um, different uh, assumptions associated with them um, and again based on all these different mathematical models they will have different speeds of uh, convergence and uh, speeds of processing we are just selecting um, static general because this is the we want to just initially run a static simulation with uh, with very basic uh, ideal assumptions and we will select this and insert the new step after so init after initiating the simulation this step will go after this so i will just press continue okay so once i will press continue it will open up this new window where i have to set up this new um, step so it will it is asking for a description i do not have to give that but it is highly recommended that you always describe your steps if there are multiple steps then it is easy to follow what we were trying to do here in in this um, step but for now i'm not giving a description here um, the time period is um, for now we will just take this default value as one nonlinear geometry is off we had we do not have a non-linear behavior of the material so therefore we will just keep it off automatic stabilization is none we are just accepting the default values um, you, it is important to understand these um, uh, solver settings because your simulation and your results depend on um, them it is hard to cover them in this lecture but maybe in the future we can we can um, talk about them and discuss them in more detail if required so you have you will see different uh, tabs here i will go into the increment tab um, it, it states here that the type is selected is automatic we want to continue with automatic because uh, in the fixed type it will be hard to um, force simulation to converge for certain increments the maximum number of increments in this time period one is set to 100 i will reduce it to um, 20 we want maximum number of increments to be 20 we want initial increment to be 0 0.05 and we want the maximum increment to be 0 0.05 um, so so then we will actually have um, I will just increase this number a little bit so in the end we will have 20 um, increments again these are the settings that 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 need to be explained in as in a separate lecture on its own and that is something that I can talk about for, for, for a very long time but for now just um, as you use you let's let's assume these values um, and you can select others and here you will um, um, see all the other settings for the solver method is direct not iterative 
um, metric storage is um, solver default or unsymmetric or symmetric full Newtonian or quasi -Newt uh, Newton and you will see all the other um, um, settings default load variation with time lamp ramp linearly over step <coughs> extrapolation of previous state at the start of the increment is uh, linear and <clears throat> on and on so these are all the solver settings um, solvers are important part of uh, a finite element uh, simulation tools which basically are used to solve a set of complicated equations to give you a solution um, for now we will go not go deep into it we are just using a static general um, solver with one time period nonlinear geometry off and these settings right let's go on so now once i pressed okay you saw that now um, two will appear here so basically now we have two steps and the initial one in which our simulation will initialize and then this load one in which we will be able to apply load um, and once as soon as i generate my step one and one appears here so field output and history output are automatically defined here there is so this field output request and history output request basically are the types of outputs that we want to write after the simulation is complete and here we can open it we can double click it and a new window will open up and um, here we can see what kind of um, what kind of outputs we are trying to write here so as we discussed before here so what we want to get out is once we will apply this load what kind of total deformation will take place what will be the stresses what will be the strains and that is what we are interested in right so we are not interested in contacts we are not interested in forces in displacements we are interested in um, translations and rotations in the strains we are interested in um, total strain components there is no plastic uh, strain so we are not interested in them um, logarithmic strain we are also not interested in that and then in the stresses we are interested in the stress component and uh, but what is where is this PMAC coming from yeah here okay so stress strain deformation that is all that we are interested in and <clears throat> what the what how the output will be written is it will be written for the whole model uh, on every n increment um, which means every uh, where n is selected as one which means on every increment right um, and i will press okay and in history output basically um, it is uh, generally the output uh, for the whole model and we do not require energies but we also do not require displacements or velocities or accelerations we are also not interested in the force or reactions um, yeah generally we are not interested in for now we are not interested in um, any of these um, history output variables so um, I will just go for pre-selected pre defaults, but we will not be um, looking into them um, in, in this simulation. They are sometimes very interesting uh, for, for more complicated simulations or for specific special use cases. We might take a look at them later, but today we will not be doing it. So um, then generally, because we only have one piece and there is no, uh, it is not getting in contact with anything we will just skip time points adaptive mesh constraints we will not be doing adaptive meshing we will not define interactions or interaction properties contact controls or anything like this and we will directly come uh, here so we want to define boundary conditions which means we want to as we discussed before so we want to fix it from one end and we want to apply load on the other end and that is something that we can do here apply boundary conditions and apply loads so in the boundary conditions if i double click this i get this window so i will name it fixed end and i want to apply it in the initial condition and it will be mechanical 
boundary condition symmetric axis and anti symmetric in caster so we if I click OK, it will ask me select the regions for the boundary conditions. I will just select these regions. You see when I select this, um, it, it turns red. If it is not facing in this direction, you can just use these buttons to then orient it in, in, in your direction, now, right? And then select this face, which is then is highlighted red. I will press done and then it will open up this window. <coughs> Here I can select all the different types of uh, boundary conditions. Um, pinned or encaster will be useful for me because um, because as you would have studied before um, in the in the finite element course, u1, u2, u3. So displacement in x direction, displacement in y direction, and displacement in z direction is equal to zero. And here displacements as well as rotations in all directions are equal to zero. So this is more fixed kind of condition and I will select this and I will press OK and when I will press OK you will see that it has now um, been fixed so you will see all these pins associated here now I want to apply load on the other end so what I will do is I will select load and this window comes up I will apply I will write name force um, and I want to apply it in the load step that we defined um, it will be I don't know concentrated force if I select OK can I apply it on the edge no I can't no so that is why I will then select pressure but can I apply it on the edge no I cannot um, yeah so then what we will uh, do is we will select pressure let's this will be interesting so i will i will select pressure i will press continue and instead of applying load here i will apply pressure on this whole area like like we did here on the other side and for that i will have to rotate it now see what i do i will rotate it like this hmm. But now remember that that if I want to apply pressure here, um, select the surface for the load individually. I press done, and this new window will appear. All right. So just remember this. So now I want to apply I want to apply pressure on this surface in the negative y direction. In the negative y direction. So distribution is uniform, but how do I select the the direction? I cannot select the direction if I select pressure. Hmm. This is tricky. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. I don't know force would have been good um, we can apply force on the on the, on the two edges and later we will see how we go on so I can select this and then I can continue to press shift and I can select this and then I can select this and then I can select this okay so I select four corners and I press done this window will appear now it asks for um, concentrated force in one direction in x direction that is equal to zero concentrated force in two direction that is equal to minus how much do we want to apply let's apply 1000 newtons or 3000 newtons and then in this and then in, in this z direction it is also again equal to zero and amplitude is ramp which means with with time it will linearly increase and um, 
we select let's say we select follow nodal rotation we don't want to select that we just press ok and now you will see in all these four corners you will see these small arrows that are going downwards which means that the that the force has been applied on these four corners that will go in in that direction yeah so what I can do is I can again make it like this <clears throat> and now last thing is remaining in our um, in our simulation and that is defining mesh so I will go in part really part mesh I will go in mesh uh, module and here I will need to define a mesh so mesh basically you would know is um, discretization um, a method where we basically divide our big block or complicated uh, piece into its smaller easier sections uh, smaller sections that are easier to um, um, analyze and uh, do the calculations for and then um, that is the basic principle of using um, finite element simulations no? that is the basics of finite element simulation so what we do here is we want to define um, seeds um, global seeds or local seeds so once I click here it will ask me this so approximate global size is let's let's assume it is 0 0.01 uh, and if I apply I will see that the this will be quite big so what I do is I select 0 0.05 and then I apply and then I see okay so there are quite many um, um, elements on this and then I will also have at least two elements across this um, thickness direction seems good I click OK and then I can select the element type if I select the element type I, I see this big window which pops up and here I will select standard linear 3d stress and so so it is just selection of element type then there is also something that we usually do we define controls if I select controls you will see that it is um, hexagonal tetragonal wedge structured or whatever so it is so in this for the current case I want to define hexagonal structured uh, type of mesh this is also something that needs to be discussed in detail what kind of mesh we apply where why when and what what assumptions does it have what are the positives and negatives of it but we are not going deep into that once I have done these things then I can just click on this which is if I mesh part and it will say okay to mesh part and then I click yes and then it will mesh the part so now it has um, resolved our big problem into smaller problems that are easier to solve so you will see that now these are called elements and these points are called nodes and so all the each of these corner points is called nodes and in the student edition of Abacus this is the limitation that we cannot use more than 1000 nodes for a specific part okay so so far so good so we, uh, once we have defined the mesh um, now everything is okay and we have also defined the boundary conditions now we can just um, run our simulation so let's let's try that um, for to, to run our simulation what I have to do is I have to double click on jobs this new window will appear and in this jobs section what I have what I will do is I will write candy bean the name and then I will say elastic and once I will do this it this window will appear here I um, so it is a full analysis run in the background or uh, submit immediately and then I can also select different memory options um, uh, parallelization options I want to use multiple processors two processors and uh, multiprocessing mode is default I press OK and now job is created I can select click here and then I can see this job um, there are different ways of running a job you can also click you can also 
um, click here which will show you all the created jobs in this window here and then you can click submit um, from here that is what usually people like or what you can do is you can right click here and then you can click submit uh, and then the job will be submitted for um, solution because it is a relatively simple job what i am expecting is um, that uh, it will run um, quickly and we will um, efficiently um, receive all the results so yeah you see that it is already completed and there is now completed written here now when we once we want to see the results we can right click on it and now we can click results and here we have these results so initially um, it will just show us the um, our our defined part whether it's mesh in green color um, which is its initial state and if I want to see its deformed state I have to click here so it will show me the deformed state this is the initial state this is the deformed state right and uh, if I want to see uh, the contour plot then I click here and then it will show me the contour plot um, for based on different colors and now the question is what do these colors represent these colors are representing for now stress and here you will see all the three outputs that we um, wrote and for if you if you if i want to see total deformation um u is deformation the magnitude is the total magnitude of deformation um, and you will see that the, the maximum deformation was at this end and the minimum deformation was at this end because at the other end the magnitude is hmm, almost 68 millimeters and at this end it is zero millimeters and i can also look at the results in x y and uh, z direction what i can also do is i can look at the stresses so you will see that because this this end deformed there is almost no stress here and there are very high stresses here and if i will look at the strain um, i will not be able to see um, the equivalent um, strain because we did not uh, control it but you can see that maximum principal strain or strain in x direction strain in y direction and strain in z direction is visible here so this is so these are very basics of um of post processing to look at the results and you can and you can understand them um we will do more post processing later and then later we will look at all the different possibilities and um, analysis and um, interesting insights into how we can get more out of these results other than just these colors if we want to plot graphs or we want to um, take out nice pictures for uh, for the project reports or for the for the presentations how, how to do that and that is something that we will do later so yeah um, and this is how we um, simulate a, a cantilever beam in um, elastic mode and um, yeah we are already at the 45 minutes mark and I think we can then cover the plastic mode um, later so yeah thank you very much for listening and then um, see you later bye